For months, Thailand has been struggling to deal with its worst public health crisis in living memory. We have seen people dying on the streets. We have seen numbers shooting up. Over 1 million people have been infected. Over 10,000 people have died. The rapid surge of COVID-19 infections has also triggered the toughest lockdown in over a year, disrupting schools and turning the lives of millions of children upside down. It has devastating consequences on, on children's well-being, on children's learning. The economic crisis which ensued has also caused widespread deprivation and hardships to the people across the nation. It has also threatened the younger generation with a life of poverty and crime. COVID-19 has affected Thailand's young generation in more ways than one. Can something be done to ensure that the children will not have to suffer from the catastrophic impact of the outbreak before it's too late? Thailand was once widely seen as a success story in the global fight against COVID-19. It's even internationally praised for its initial handling of the pandemic by keeping the disease at bay. But that changed since April this year. All of a sudden, it saw a massive surge in COVID-19 cases, driven by the highly transmissible Delta variant. Infections climbed to more than 20,000 daily, and over 200 deaths were recorded at the peak of the crisis. What happened was then we had a spread of COVID late December and early January as well. So when that happened, the state wasn't prepared at all. Everything was based on the idea that there would only be alpha variant, which they controlled it well. But when it spread it, the whole plan collapsed. As in uh, July, we have seen people dying on the streets. We've seen numbers shooting up. Over 1 million people have been infected. Over 10,000 people have died. And this is the problem because of the mismanagement of COVID that has been done by the state. But the state is not realizing it. To curb the spread of the virus, the government had imposed lockdowns and nightly curfew in Bangkok and in as many as 28 provinces throughout the country. Schools were also closed for months in an effort to contain the spread of the virus. But these strict measures had the unintended effect of severely disrupting the country's economic recovery efforts. Its GDP fell by more than 6% last year. This year is expected to grow at only 2.6%. And ordinary people would often bear the brunt of an economic downturn. Children, too, will not be spared. Children risk being the biggest victims of COVID pandemic. Economic instability has disrupted essential services and making, even, making it even harder for families to make ends meet at the end of the month. Children are being affected by school closures. So the harsh reality is that today, the situation is much worse for millions of children. They're facing access, reduced access to essential services such as healthcare, mental health support, social protection, and education. Since schools were ordered to shut in April, 10-year-old Boom Akuad Kayu Kalaya has been attending online classes using his mother's old smartphone. When her phone stopped working a few months ago, his education also took a backseat. Getting a new phone is not an option for 48-year-old Warapon Chan Chu, who barely scraped by with a measly wage of six US dollars a day. Boom Akuwat now spends his day helping out at the street food store where his mother works. 
ก็ล้างช้อนล้างซ่อมครับแล้วก็ช่วยยกหม้อช่วยขิดหม้อครับเพราะว่าผมจะได้ไปเรียนครับรู้สึกคิดถึงเพื่อนคุณครูแล้วก็อยากเรียนอยากมีความความรู้เพิ่มขึ้นครับผมอยากจะสอบด้วยเกรดดีๆก่อนนี้ครับ At the peak of the pandemic, when there was a full closure of school, there were around 12 million children being affected, uh, and and it's it has devastating consequences on on children' well-being, on children' learning. Children are at risk of are more at risk of dropping out of school. Uh, they face the quality of learning is impacted, and most importantly, schools. Are a place for children to interact, to socialize with their peers. The longer the schools are closing, the longer children are being cut off from this essential element of childhood. Man, ก็ไม่ค่อยมีอะไรให้ผมเล่นแล้วเพราะเพื่อนเพื่อนก็ไม่อยู่ครับชอบเล่นล้อเปิดแล้วก็มีคนฝึกซ้อมมวยด้วยครับแล้วผมก็ชอบไปเล่นกับคนเหล่านั้นแต่เขาก็เขาก็ไม่อยู่แล้วผมก็ไม่ได้ไปนู่นด้วยครับผมเลยมีเวลาน้อยลงที่จะไปหาเขาครับ Without a working device for online classes, all Boom Akwat can do is to self-study by relying on the learning materials sent to him by his teacher. w a t a p o n is worried that missing school over a long period will have a lasting impact on her son's future. With her finances in shambles due to the pandemic, she's now at her wit's end, not knowing how to get the family out of the predicament. Today, we'll get out. 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 มันลำบากมากได้รายแล้วเรียนออนไลน์แบบนี้ก็ไม่ใช่นะคะให้ไปเรียนที่โรงเรียนเลยดีกว่าอินเทอร์เน็ตก็ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ทุกอย่างน้องเรียนเก่งเกียรติทุกตัวค่ะอยากตามรอยของคุณลุงและคุณป้าอาชีพบุตรพยาบาลก็ได้หรือไม่ก็ครูก็ได้หรือตำรวจก็ได้ค่ะสิ่งที่เป็นปัจจัยที่ทําให้เด็กหลุดออกจากระบบการศึกษาเนี่ยก็คือปัจจัยที่เราเรียกว่ามีความยากจนเข้ามาเกี่ยวข้องเราสำรวจในจังหวัดที่ไม่ใช่สีแดงเข้มนะนะครับไม่ไม่ใช่สิในจังหวัดที่สีแดงเข้มแล้วปิดโรงเรียนทั้งระบบล้านกว่าคนเนี่ยนะครับเป็นเด็กยากจนพิเศษเนี่ยเดี๋ยวนะครับผมขอใช้อ้างอิงตัวเลขสักนิดหนึ่งปรากฏว่าเป็นเด็กยากจนพิเศษ2 2แสนจากล้านกว่าคนเนี่ยในกลุ่มเด็กยากจนพิเศษ 87% ไม่มีทีวีเป็นคุณเรียนออนแอร์ออนอะไรต่างๆเข้าไม่ถึง 97% ไม่มีคอมพิวเตอร์ไม่มีสมาร์ทโฟนเห็นไหมครับนี่คือความเหลื่อมล้ำจากเรื่องของเทคโนโลยีถ้าเรายังไม่ช่วยเหลือเด็กไม่ติดตามเด็กการคาดการจะมีเด็กดรอปเอาหรือออกกลางคันเนี่ยประมาณ 65,000 คน Before the pandemic, w a r a p o n had a comfortable income as a fortune teller and masseuse. But when the pandemic struck, w a r a p o n lost her job and had to survive on poorly paid odd jobs until a friend offered her a job at a food stand. Workers in the service sector, like w a r a p o n Make up more than 40% of Thailand's labor force, and they're hit hard by the pandemic. The job market at the moment, I think, the people who are um, what we call unskilled labor uh, in the service industries, or those who are affected by state policies, i.e., such as you know how they shut down the restaurants. 10 million people suddenly have been affected. Uh, parents can't go to work, 20, you know, as they used to. So, so slowly it will have a profound effect. จากที่เราคือดูดวงได้วันละสามพันกว่าบาทแรงได้ดีค่ะเพราะว่าใช้ได้แต่โควิดมารอบแรกเราไม่ไหวนาฬิกาพังทุกอย่างพังไม่มีอะไรเหลือเอาทุกอย่างที่ได้เงินล้างส้วมก็ทําทุกอย่างที่ใครใช้อ่ะมันมีสามหลังล้างส้วมนะคะวันละร้อยนะคะจ่ายเป็นอาทิตย์คุณแม่ทําทุกอย่างน้องเคยไปค่ะตอนเด็กๆคุณแม่สู้แต่ตามมาสู้ก็รักก็รักลูกแต่หนูไม่ลูกหนูนะเราต้องสู้ชีวิตของเราให้ได้ไม่มีใครช่วยเรา
เราต้องสู้ด้วยลำแข้งค่ะวาร์ปอนส์ predicament echoes across the country in 2020 Around 1.5 million Thais were estimated to have fallen into poverty due to the pandemic. And by 2021, children living under the poverty line has increased by 10%. So the socioeconomic impact of, of COVID has tremendous impact on the children's life. Families may decide to cut back on essential expenditures in health, in education, in food. So this is where governments need to prioritize children as part of their recovery strategies. If you look at the future, and look at the future, the future of COVID-19, they will have problems like this, three things. The education, the education, the education, the education, the education, if you are in the year, two years, the education, 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 เขาจะเริ่มคล้ายๆเหมือนขาดสังคมแล้วสิ่งที่มันจะตามมาก็คือเด็กที่ดรอปเอาท์เนี่ยประมาณ 65,000 คนเนี่ยมันจะกลายเป็นเด็กนอกระบบเขาก็จะออกมาเป็นกรรมกรหรือผู้ใช้แรงงานไร้ฝีมือเนี่ยปัญหาสังคมมันจะตามมาทั้งเรื่องยาเสพติดถูกไหมเรื่องความรุนแรงนะเรื่องของพ่อแม่วัยใสเรื่องปัญหาสังคมจะตามมาเยอะแยะเลย in July this year, Thailand's cabinet approved additional COVID-19 relief measures, including a handout of 59 US dollars per child. It aims to ease the financial burdens of families by covering part of the child's education expenses. While the move is a step in the right direction, it fails to address the dire situation of many low-income households. <laughs> ถ้าในในมุมมองผมเนี่ยมันก็เป็นลักษณะของการเมืองทางออกที่ไม่ใช่เรื่องเยียวยาเงินแค่สองพันแต่คุณจะต้องมีโปรแกรมเขาเรียกว่าโปรแกรม recover เด็กอะกลุ่มเนี้ย We need to make sure that we catch up these children who have left school and who have dropped out of school We need to bring them back to school we need to set up in place program for remedial teaching so they catch up on whatever they've missed over the last 18 months. The pandemic for us is a critical wake-up moment to make sure that we're investing in education, that we're strengthening the education system to make sure every single child in Thailand is able to develop to its full potential. The devastating fallout from the pandemic has created a ripple effect on children uprooting them from life as they know it, disrupting their education and jeopardizing their future. As Thailand battles its worst outbreak so far, long-standing social issues are exacerbated. How can these children be prevented from becoming a lost generation? For over a year, Thailand has been in a continued state of emergency. Nationwide lockdowns and border restrictions have helped to stem the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Yet these measures have come at the expense of the economy. Thailand has been the hardest hit among ASEAN countries, with its GDP contracting by over 6% in 2020. By this year, the unemployment rate has hit a 12-year high. The economy is now at its worst since the Asian financial crisis in the 90s, aggravating the desperate situation of the nation's already struggling working class. I would call the uh, 1997 financial crisis a crisis of the rich. Back then, it was the rich who borrowed in dollars that were in big trouble. But this time, it's the smaller uh, companies, it's the working people who are most adversely affected by this uh, pandemic. Tourism as a whole is 20% of Thailand's GDP. The pandemic has basically wiped out almost all of that. The impact is quite large. Um, the reason is because tourism as it was uh, did spread out the employment and the revenue generation 
uh, throughout many parts of the country, not just the main tourism centers. Um, and even in those main tourism centers, it, it goes into smaller restaurants and smaller um, tourist locations. These streets in Bangkok were once buzzing with activity. The capital also used to be a bustling tourist destination. With strict lockdown measures and border restrictions in place, they now stand deserted. Businesses that are heavily reliant on international tourists and local consumption have been in deep slump since 2020. Before 2019, we have 40 million tourists in Thailand. Last year, we only have about 3 million. That's about 3.3 billion baht that we are not, we, we lost in the cash flow in Thailand. So it affects us a lot. As the pandemic drags on, many businesses had to make the tough call of laying off workers to survive. And the hardest hit are the medium and low-skilled workers who make up the bulk of the labour population. So, this hotel business, hospitality business, we have more than 8 million people who are working in this category. At least 50% were laid off. 50% at least, okay? That's how, how the business survived. We have to reorganize, we have to cut down all the expenses. Now we, we just try to find a new way how to, how to, how to live, how to uh, help these people. Bloomberg just did a resilience index that said that Thai laborers were the ones who were hardest hit in the world by, on average, 75% of their incomes disappeared, especially after the spread of COVID in the middle of this year. So I think we are in a very bad situation. Despite the government's decisive action in implementing a series of financial assistance packages to mitigate the impact of COVID-19, swift vaccination of the population remains the key to avoiding lockdowns and spurring economic activity. But Thailand's vaccine rollout has been slow and chaotic. The government did not really plan on how to get the vaccine, enough vaccine for all people. And that's a big problem to control the, you know, uh, Delta variants. Until September, only about 30% of Thai populations got the vaccine. And, you know, there's a lot of confusing of the vaccines as well. They say that they would give the vaccine to people who are older, like 60 years old first. But in practice, um, the vaccines kind of are very confusing. Some give it to like a VIP people, some give it to VVIP people. Uh, some vaccines, you know, give it to university. There's no management. As hopes of an economic recovery fade, the country's poor are stretched thin and pushed into the fringes of society. Local NGOs like the Street Teacher Project have stepped up. For more than 30 years, 57-year-old Tongpo Bozri has worked to protect street children, especially now, during the height of the pandemic. เฮ้ยเราเนี่ยเป็นเด็กยากจนเนาะเราก็เป็นครอบครัวที่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่เป็นครอบครัวที่แตกแยกนะคะพอไปทางแม่ไปทางแ
รีบเลยค่ะเพราะเราถือว่ามันเป็นโอกาสที่ดีที่สุดที่เราจะได้ทํางานอย่างที่เราตั้งตั้งตั้งตั้งตั้งเป้าหมายไว้ Tong Pol and her team provides education support for street children. She believes that keeping youths in the education system is crucial to liberating them from a life of poverty and despair. We think that giving them just one time is not going to solve the problem of poverty. We can read the book, or we can teach our children to get to the third grade. We can try to find out that our children are not going to ask for help. Our children are not going to sell food, but our children will go to the market to buy a little bit of food. We are doing every way to make our children be able to learn the most important skills for the most important skills. This is the task of the street 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 that we need to do. Since the pandemic, Tongpu's caseload has soared, and the scope of her work has expanded too. เอาไปให้กรณีศึกษาด้วยค่ะงานครูจิงเนี่ยปรับเชฟหมดเลยเดิมเนี่ยเราไปสอนในแหล่งก่อสร้างแล้วอ่านออกจะเขียนได้นะคะตอนนี้แค่จะไม่ได้อ่านออกและเขียนได้เลยตอนนี้คือประคองกันแค่เอาชีวิตให้รอดมีถุงยางชีพไปแจกมีถุงยางชีพไปแบง่งเราประคองมาตั้งแต่ปลายธันวาห้าสองหกเอาของห้าหกสองนะจนถึงปัจจุบันเนี่ยสิ่งที่มันเป็นปัญหากับเราคือถุงยางชีพมันน้อยลงเพราะทุกคนมันเดือดร้อนด้วยกันหมดมันกระทบทั้งครอบครัวครอบครัวของเด็กด้วยหนึ่งมันตกด้วยภาวะของพ่อแม่ตกงานเพราะนั้นรายได้ของครอบครัวแทบจะไม่มีอันดับที่สองออครอบครัวยังไม่อิ่มครอบครัวก็จะมีความรู้สึกว่าเฮ้ยไปทํางานก่อนไปหารายได้ก่อนแล้วก็เอาเอาเอาเอา,เอามาเลี้ยงครอบครัวก่อนเรื่องการเรียนเป็นเรื่องสุดท้ายอีกอันหนึ่งที่มันเป็นปัญหาเรื่องของสภาพจิตใจของเด็กจะถูกให้ทํางานบนท้องถนนเอ้ยมาเราเร็วเข้ามาขายพวงมาเลยขายดอกจำปีเพราะว่าโรงเรียนไม่ได้เรียนไงค่าอุปกรณ์การอุปกรณ์อะไรนะค่ามือทงมือถือก็ไม่มีเพราะนั้นก็ต้องไปขายพวงมาลัยเพื่อที่เอาเงินมาเลี้ยงครอบครัวก่อน Today Tongpo will drop off a care pack for w a r a p o n and Boom a k u w a t Tongpo met Warapon and Boom Akawat when they were homeless and living on the streets in 2020. Warapon has since found a job that comes with accommodation. For the mother and son, home is now an industrial kitchen at a gas station. ตอนนี้คนไม่อยู่ตรงนี้หมดเลยเอาแล้วนอนยังไงอ่ะก็นอนเวลานะเราก็เอาเก้าอี้ออกค่ะอ๋อเอาเก้าอี้ออกแล้
so that make people feel mistrust or insecure about management in this country. Younger generation that live in this um, COVID era and not have normal life, so they feel hopelessness and cannot to see their future. I think it's terrible because uh, younger generation uh, is uh, the, the next people that to build this country. With Thailand reeling from the country's deadliest outbreak, mounting anger against the government's handling of the pandemic has reignited a youth movement calling for change and sparked nationwide protests that is uniting unlikely foes. An acute economic distress has become more visible in Thailand. The once bustling tourist haven is now eerily quiet. Empty streets and shuttered shops are now a common sight in Bangkok today. A clear indication that economic hardships have taken a toll on the people. And that has fueled the rise of an anti-government movement in the country and it's led by a younger generation of Thais which has become disillusioned over the current state of affairs. 18-year-old Thanakon Piraban grew up in a single-parent household. His father works as a motorcycle taxi driver to support the family. With Bangkok's strict movement restrictions in place, Thanakon's father now struggles to make ends meet. To lighten his family's financial burden, Tanakon is forced to make one of the most difficult and biggest decisions in his life. Almost a year ago, he dropped out of college to work and support himself financially. He now lives in a shared apartment and is left to fend for himself. แล้วก็กลายเป็นว่าคือเราก็เหมือนเหมือนต้องพยายามดิ้นรนหาหาหาอะไรทําอย่างwith his education abruptly interrupted, he has found job openings increasingly scarce nowadays, especially under the current economic conditions. Tanakon's future is now in limbo. UNICEF conducted a survey last year uh, among around 7,500 young people aged 15 to 19. And seven out of 10 of them express anxiety, fear, stress. They're obviously most concerned about their family financial status, thinking that their parents will lose their jobs, that there will be less income. The second biggest issue they're facing is thinking about their future. Despite the overwhelming uncertainties, Tanakon is determined to pave his own future. A part of Thailand's tech-savvy generation, Tanakon sees the immense potential of digital technology in the COVID-19 era. He now utilizes TikTok as a platform to sell products as an influencer, earning about 370 US dollars a month. <laughs> กับการที่ถ้าคนอื่นเขายังเรียนได้อะไรได้แล้วเราต้องดรอปออกมาแล้วก็จะเอาเป็นเป็นแรงเหรียญคริปโตอะไร
while Tanakan is prepared to face life's adversities head on. Being away from his family and friends for extended periods of time has deeply affected him emotionally. ก็ค่อนค่อนข้างที่จะค่อนข้างจะค่อนข้างจะมากพอสมควรเพราะว่าเราไม่ได้เจอหน้าครอบครัวซึ่งปกติเราเคยอยู่ด้วยกันประจํา
ties of different socio-economic class and political alliances have united in their call for the resignation of Prime Minister Prayut Chan-o-Cha. The protests this year are, you know, uh, consisting not only from the young generation group, but they are also consisting, you know, the protesters are from the people who are more like older generations or, you know, the protesters who are, who were, uh, who are joining the yellow shirt and the red shirt. For anyone who knows about Thai politics, there's a fighting between the yellow shirts or the royalists and also the red shirts or the pro-democracy side. Uh, but this year, you know, um, they joined together and they have the same goals that they want the uh, Prime Minister to, to reside. แล้วก็ยังหายังหาทางออกไม่ได้อย่างแรกเลยก็คือวัคซีนเนี่ยที่เราที่เราผมว่ามันมีปัญหามากที่สุดอยากเห็นการเปลี่ยนแปลงครับ
The state cannot manage the most important part, which is vaccination. So other problems come because no vaccination, more spread of virus, you shut down the economy, you create an economic crisis. At the same time, you create health crisis as well. Another main issue with General Prayut is that he's very dependent on few of his advisors, which I think they have a problem by not really understanding you know, the reality which is happening on the streets. And because of that wall that he's created, from him and the political party, from him and the people, that is why he, he's now being cornered. Well, I think there's three things that they need to do uh, as a priority. First of all, obviously, they know this, vaccination, right? They, the, the, they are behind the curve on vaccination, and they will not be able to bring about any semblance of recovery without proper vaccination rate. Secondly, you must design a system, a mechanism, a process to live with COVID, which probably includes a lot of testing and screening uh, by the private sector with some very clear government assistance. The third thing, and most important and most difficult, is how do we restructure the Thai economy to thrive in the co living with COVID era? For example, we had tourism 20% of GDP. In the era of living with COVID, maybe tourism will be 10% of GDP. The resources that were devoted to tourism, how do you reallocate them to some other productive use? I think that's a, a big, big challenge, not to mention the fact that there were other outstanding problems in Thailand. Meanwhile, the pandemic continues to cause disruptions to the country's educational system. After more than six months of school closure, the number of dropouts has surged and the risk of permanent learning loss has risen drastically, underlying an urgent need for major education reforms too. การเรียนรู้ปัจจุบันต่อไปนะไม่ว่าจะมีโควิดหรือไม่มีโควิดมันจะต้องเป็นยังไงครับอยู่บนระบบไอทีถูกมั้ยนะครับอยู่บนระบ
but it must now embark on a transition to a new normal where COVID-19 becomes a part of life. Otherwise, it will run the risk of losing more of its young people through no fault of their own. Raising fears over the creation of a generation of young people who may be permanently scarred due to the impact of the pandemic. เราต้องเอาชนะมันไม่ใช่กลัวความกลัวและการตัดสินใจนโยบายที่ผิดพลาดเนี่ยส่งผลเสียทั้งเศรษฐกิจสังคมการศึกษาคุณภาพเด็ก